Now it's time for today's perspective. Just a warning, there are some disturbing images coming up. Today marks two years to the day since the horrific death of at least 23 migrants, with many more disappeared or injured, as around 2,000 people tried to get into the Spanish northern African enclave of Melilla from Morocco. Now, at the time, the Spanish Prime Minister described events as a rush on the enclave, an attack on Spain's territorial integrity. Indeed, at the end of 2022, the Spanish prosecutor closed a case on what happened, absolving the Spanish border police from blame. But already, human rights investigators and journalists had dug up a very different picture. These images we're going to show you now of migrants killed and injured published as part of an investigation by Lighthouse Reports, published in a series of European newspapers, including the Spanish paper El País. But the battle to uncover what happened has not stopped there. Now another group, Border Forensics, has gone even further. And Charles Heller, who is Director of Research at Border Forensics and uh, Professor at the University of Bern, joins us now to talk uh, more about it. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme today. I mean, the report, doesn't it, signals out what is a, a very disturbing disturbing timeline of what happened and you go to very extraordinary lengths don't you to to prove it absolutely thanks Stuart I mean today is the 24th of June and I'm in thoughts with the survivors with the families of the deceased of the disappeared because two years after the events there has been no accountability there's been no identification of the deceased and the disappeared and furthermore Morocco has actually used its judiciary to repress and imprison, criminalize uh, some of the survivors pushed back in Morocco and sentenced them to several years um, in prison. Our report does paint a very, very different picture than uh, the accounts provided by Moroccan and Spanish authorities in their reports and investigations. They have claimed, as you mentioned, that it was the movement of the migrants themselves that caused the death. In fact, we demonstrate that it's the repression performed both by Spanish and Moroccan agents, and that, um, in effect, uh, a trap was constructed um, on the day and in the days prior to the 24th of June 2022. You see, in fact, on the very images that you're showing at this moment, that the migrants were descending the, the hill, the, the Mount Grugu, and that there were um, buses from the Moroccan forces deployed that did not intervene. Then the migrants were channeled into the Barrio Chino border post, which you see pictured here, um, and they were violently repressed um, once inside. It it's a very strong word to use. I noticed you used the word trap. I mean, it's a very strong word to use, isn't it? And, but you, you're very confident, aren't you, in the evidence that you've gathered that actually that is what happened? In fact, the images that you just showed right here and that we're seeing this second show that the migrants were caught in an enclosed space, the Barrio Chino border post, and repressed once inside. In that sense, the Barrio Chino border post did become a trap for uh, the migrants, and they were violently repressed uh, inside, causing many deaths and disappearance. But we do demonstrate as well that the trap was constructed in the weeks and days prior to the 24th of June. First of all, starting from um, the, the, the re-establishment of diplomatic relations between Spain and Morocco in April 2022, um, Morocco stepped up the repression against migrants in the camps surrounding the border area. Second, we saw that on the 23rd of June, the migrants in the camps were given an ultimatum, either leave the camp or face brutal lethal consequences. Thus, they were given an ultimatum and had to cross the border on the 24th of June. Third, we also show that there was one migrant who was um, working and communicating with the Moroccan law enforcement agents and who actually advised the migrants not to cross with the usual equipment, such as hopes, to climb the barriers. We also demonstrate with satellite uh, imagery that on the 23rd of June, there was in, in fact an increased military deployment at the border. All of this reveals that by the 23rd of June, the day before the massacre, uh, a trap had been constructed. At so the why, why do you believe that that enemy. would be done? I mean, what, what would be the advantage of doing that for the authorities? I mean, clearly we have not found any documents or account from Moroccan or Spanish agents uh, d demonstrating the intent of that trap. However, all the elements we have found demonstrate the coherence of the construction 
of a trap. Morocco had reestablished um, relations with Spain. Spain had conceded to some um, elements to Moroccan uh, diplomacy, and Morocco clearly wanted to demonstrate that it was ready to repress migrants in the area on behalf of Spain, on behalf of the EU, as it has done um, in the past. It's also um, a fact that the migrants um, in the forest, so over those previous days and, and weeks, had resisted um, the, the harassment by the Moroccan law enforcement agents. And there may have been a dimension of vengeance on the part of Moroccan law enforcement agents. We certainly see a very clear desire to hurt, to, humili to humiliate, to wound um, in the brutal violence that was unleashed by and having, agents. having done this research, how does it make you feel, as somebody who spent a lot of time looking into it, that people can be treated in this way? It's absolutely horrifying. Um, some of the survivors told the BBC, I, I was struck by that when the BBC investigation came out. One of them said, I didn't die, but I am no longer living. The scale of dehumanization of, and, and violence exercised on that day is absolutely horrendous. And it's incredible that two years after the events, despite the footage, despite the investigations, there has been no accountability whatsoever. This absolutely has to change. Morocco and Spain have to respond to the demands for truth, for justice, for identification, for release of the prisoners um, from the survivors and the families of the disappeared and uh, the deceased. Having done the research, I mean, what are your hopes? I mean, do you think there's any way that what you've uncovered can be used to ensure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again? Certainly, we hope that our investigation will contribute to exercise pressure on Morocco and Spain for um, accountability. And I think another dimension of our investigation that, it's in, that is important is that it, take us, it takes a longer view. Uh, the trap of Nador Melia was constructed before the 24th of June. It was constructed before the days and weeks prior to that day. It was constructed through policies that discriminate migrants crossing this border, that, uh, that uh, create a situation of impunity through policies of border externalization. And it is all of those dimensions of the trap, which also includes racism targeting black migrants at that border and beyond, all of those dimensions across different spaces, different temporalities that need to be dismantled if we want to never again see such a horrifying uh, massacre at this border. And just to come back to the beginning, if you like, I mean, as, as I said, though, the Spanish prosecutor closed a case on what happened, absolving the Spanish border police. Both sides have denied uh, that they did anything wrong. What would your response be to that? Well, our investigation demonstrates factually that their conclusions are wrong. Uh, we analyze systematically all of the claims put forward by the Spanish and Moroccan authorities to um, deny responsibility for the events. And we demonstrate factually that those conclusions are wrong. Thus, we strongly call on Morocco, on Spain, and also on the EU, which is complicit with these states and their repression of migrants at this border, to um, hold their agents and states accountable for what happened on that horrifying day. Charles Heller, good to talk to you on the programme today. Charles Heller, Director of Research at Border Forensic. Thanks very much for being with us.